Hello, y'all. It's 4.01 p.m. in the afternoon. I just woke up from a nap. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't remember how long I slept for, but after I got done doing the previous video, I took a nap. I needed more sleep. So, um, I'm st after hand washing my clothes, I'm still trying to let them air dry. Um... I have all the lights off in the room. It's still daytime, you know. So, I don't have the camera turned towards me because I'm still air drying my clothes. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I woke up. I mean, I, I came on this video to tell about more dream manipulation nightmares during the day. And so... I mean, yeah, I was so tired, I needed more sleep. And so, a couple of, or was it the same dream, or two different n nightmares, that, um, alright, it was two different dreams or nightmares that I had. So, like, I had a nightmare that, um, well, I don't know if it's bad dreams during the day, is it still called a nightmare? So, um, I had a nightmare that, um, I had to, like, it, it replayed in a bad dream this time. The time where, like, after Christmas, fake Christmas and before the New Year's, I was in real life, like, after the... In the middle of the night of the same night that I was wrongfully kicked out of and banned from the airport because my twin sister and her devout cult, cult, cult uh, her devout cult followers, flying monkey gang stalkers, they all they lied they contacted the airport and lied on me and got me wrongfully banned from the airport. Um, right, it was right. Um the day before I was supposed to start work and which was the day after I got hired so I mean I showed the video of you know the biological and drunk see now they're making noise um drunk lady Yvonne and in the dream um now now in real life Ramona and Yvonne lived like a couple of blocks and around the corner like a couple of blocks from each other for <clears throat> excuse me for quite a few years um and I don't remember if it was 2017 or no it was 2018 I think that Ramona moved away from the 7th Ward and moved to the ninth Ward and I don't know where Ramona is living at now um, and she still left to live in the same spot in the ninth ward. I had never even made any any attempts to go by Ramona's house, but um, in the dream, like Ramona, I mean, I'm sorry, Yvonne lives in like a duplex, like um, so in the dream, um, that I just. I mean, I didn't just wake up from, I dream, had this dream earlier today, um, the first part of my nap, and um, Yvonne was, you know, in the, in the dream, Ramona and Yvonne were next door neighbors in the duplex that Yvonne currently lives in and had been living for I don't know how many years. It was sometime after Hurricane Katrina, after everybody got back. Um, Yvonne had been living in the, at that spot and never moved. But before then, you know, she had been living in the um in the Saint Bernard projects up until Hurricane Katrina and that got ruined, you know, torn down. So she'd been living at that house, that duplex house, um, since sometime after um Hurricane Katrina. I don't remember if she was living there in 2010. Um, no, you know what, sometime after Hurricane Katrina, I heard that 
um, they were living in the um, Iberville projects. And then after some time of, and I never been to their uh, their apartment at um, the Iberville projects. But after the Iberville projects, I don't know what year it was, and I, I probably never will find out how how long they've been staying. You know, at the current house Yvonne had been living in for so many years. So, in the dream, Ramona and Yvonne were next door neighbors and Ramona was living on the next side of Yvonne in the duplex but in real life Ramona never lived next door like that you know but for some reason in the dream um you know I knocked on Yvonne's door by accident and not Ramona's door and I kept with you know and lately I've been having like dreams about a portrayal of that house or that actual house you know but in the dream like I don't I never heard of any stories about Yvonne owning any pets either but Ramona had you know had cats and dogs and I don't know what other pets she might have had before but um in the dream like I knocked on the door of Yvonne's house and then there was a big dog that barked, a big huge dog, to the point where it was freaking scary, you know. And she was like, who is it, who is it? And I'm like, oh shit, I accidentally knocked on the wrong door in, in the gym. I'm like, well, I should have knocked on Ramona's door. But then when I heard Yvonne's voice, I heard up and fled, heard up and ran downstairs and, um... And left to go somewhere, and um, and and then I ended up. I was supposed to be graduating, like having a repeat of graduating from high school. But um, I was supposed to have a repeat of graduating from high school. But um, what happened was, um. I was supposed to take the transit bus and in the dream the transit buses were running late like they used to before Hurricane Katrina and in the dream I was supposed to have graduated at night and then I missed the graduation like I was supposed to relive graduating from high school again I did mention high school graduation in the previous video briefly you know so in the dream like we graduated I don't remember what time we we graduated. Um, was it? I don't I, I don't remember if it was eleven o'clock or noon that we walked across the stage and graduated in real life. I don't think it was ten o'clock in the morning, was it? I don't remember if it was ten, eleven, twelve o'clock that we graduated. You know. Um. But I graduated from high school with honors, and I fought so hard. And almost didn't make it, but I fought and I made it. 40 out of 404 people that I graduated. Went, went, and then they adjusted it and said 40 out of 410 people. No, I'm sorry, it was 30, number 39, not 40. That, for some reason, they didn't have a 40th person. Yeah, I was 39 out of 404, not 40. Um, so I graduated from high school with honors with a 3.75 or 7.6 GPA. Three point, almost 3.8 GPA. You know. And if it weren't for gang stalking setups and sabotage and stuff, I probably could have had like higher ranking. Um, I probably could have been like in the top. I don't. Well, I don't, don't want to over exaggerate and say the top 10, but. I probably could have been at least in the top 20. Um, probably could have been 12 or 13 out of 404 people. I could have like done way much better because I was doing very well financially. I mean, I'm sorry, um, academically. So, I was doing very well academically. And so, um... 
<clears throat> excuse me. But I um so yeah, like yeah, so it was like sometime maybe sometime between ten o'clock in the morning and noon. I don't remember when high school graduation was, but it's like as if I had to relive that experience in a dream and was supposed to graduate at night. And I've had a few other more recent dreams about graduating from high school or college or something. You know, but in this dream, I was supposed to have missed the graduation. And, um... You know, I missed the bus and missed the graduation, and then I woke. It, it was creepy because it was at nighttime or in the middle of the night. You know, and, and I know that they be having, like, um, you know, spiritual meanings behind these um, dream manipulation and stuff. You know, I am not selling out at all. If that's supposed to be like a spiritual meaning, yeah, I'm never selling out. No, I don't want to. So, you know, in the dream, if that means that I, you know, missed the graduation at night, missed a graduating ceremony at in the, at midnight, you know, y- y'all can, I mean... You know, I'm not going to feel bad that y'all taunting, I mean, but I'm documenting y'all are taunting and harassing me for not selling out. So that that dream, I think, was supposed to be a um a mockery at, you know, y'all think that y'all better than me for not sell, for um failing a graduation, you know, meaning not selling out. Well, I'm going to stay not selling out. And so then I got up and had to use the bathroom. And then I came back to sleep some more. And that dream was before 2.30 this afternoon. I forgot. I don't know what time I went to sleep. Was it 12 something? It was before 1 o'clock. I was really freaking tired. But I'm glad that I'm catching up on rest. Lost sleep and some rest. And resting myself. That's all I'm doing. I'm not out here to, um, and I don't have the funds, and I, I'm not out here to, um, party or, you know, go to par. I mean, go to uh, parties, clubs, bars, or, you know, live a fun life. I'm sitting here in just basic survival mode. I'm at this hotel resting my body. No smoking, no drinking, no smoking weed, no drugs, no nothing. No participating in anything so-called fun. And I have, like, as I said, $18.42 in the bank and no cash. And, um, and trying to see what I can get for under $7 for dinner. And then have to do the same thing tomorrow. I don't even know if I can work on writing any short stories today, you know. But tomorrow, I mean, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to say that. I was trying to say, excuse me, um, (sighs) after 4 o'clock, I mean, no, I'm not trying to say that. I was trying to say after I used the bathroom and it was around 2.30, I got some more sleep. And I had this um, nightmare, bad dream that I was portrayed as homeless living on the streets with nowhere to go. And in the dream, um, in, 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 in the dream, I was at some bus stop waiting for the bus at night. And then, um, in the dream, the bus stop turned into me sitting on some bench that was portrayed at the bus stop, but in reality, in the dream, um, well, not in real life, but in, in, like, how the hell am I waiting for, 
waiting for the bus in the foster mom's small backyard. That woman has like a huge house in the tiniest backyard. Like she had like the the tiniest backyard and and like she had the tiniest backyard that I've ever seen with a big house. You know, a very huge house with a tiny small backyard. So, in in the dream, I was in the foster mom's backyard sitting on what was portrayed as a bench at the bus stop waiting for whatever transit bus. And I don't know, it, I just knew it was nighttime. And in the dream, that former neighbor, Whitney, um, with skank Shitney with the 666 kids, um, in the dream, she came in the foster mom's backyard and approached me and me, and she was with another female that was portrayed as a former neighbor, but I never saw this other female in real life before. And I argued with both of them standing up for myself, and I confronted Whitney's face to face about, you know, being the cause of me being back homeless again. And I argued with both of them and was about to get jumped in the dream. You know, they both, um, you know, they both tried to jump me in the dream. And so there was a white lady that looked like she could have been Gretna police, but she was not dressed like Gretna police, but I could have, and, and I never saw this lady in real life. She was living at the foster mom's house in the dream. And then she invited me over to her house, making it like she felt bad for my homeless situation and sent for me to come by her. And then she offered, I mean, she gave me like um, nine bars, not 10, but that occult number nine. Nine bars of orange scented Dr. Bronner's bar soap, not the liquid Castile soap, but the bar soap. She gave she gave me those bars of soap, and I gave him. I mean, I gave I gave her money at first. She told me that she didn't want the money, but I insisted on giving her the money. And then, um. And then, for some reason, it was made to look like a Craigslist transaction, you know. And 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 then later on, you know, she set me up and falsely accused me of stealing the orange bars of soap. And then me and me and the lady got into a, a heated argument. And then she kicked me out, wrongfully kicked me out of her house, which was the foster mom's house. And I don't know if the foster mom still lives there, but I don't know who lives at that house right now. You know, I don't know if other family members live in that house or if completely, totally different people live up in that house. But, you know, I thought the foster mom, well, she used to pride herself on being the type to never, ever move away from that house. So I don't know who else, who owns that house now or who's living in that house if it's other foster relative, foster family relatives, or if it's just completely, totally different people. But I've heard rumors about people said that nuns used to own that house before um, the foster grandma Mildred Collins or the foster dad Al or whoever bought that house. Um, but I heard that the foster mom never owned that house in real life. But anyway, so... Um, so that lady in the dream, she, she, she was a, about my height and chunky, overweight and white with blonde hair, blonde, straight hair, not curly hair and blue eyes. And, um, and she threatened me with jail and told me, I'm going to have you trespass from here, but from your freaking house. I mean, you act like this is doggone business. And so, me and her got into an argument. 
And as I was walking out, she was talking about my house, this, my house, that. And I'm like, motherfucker, you didn't pay for this house, and the house ain't in, even in your... I found out you didn't pay for this house, and that the house ain't in, even, it has never been in your name anyway. And it's been in your friend's name. <laughs> and I'm like, is this supposed to be a reference from what I said in the previous video about Trisha? About how... She, because Trisha had... Trisha, um, Trisha said that her friend paid her friend Kim paid for her to move in that house and that she would owe Kim money so you know if Trisha been living in that house but then lied and said that um she just moved in and I'm like well that's mighty quick you got all the furniture and and everything intact you know, if you just moved in the day before anyway, but I don't know if that was kind of like the same reference, but in a dream of me telling that white lady, you know, you, you know, you, you don't, you never owned this house anyway. And your, this house ain't never been in your name and you don't never, you never pay the mortgage. You don't pay shit on this house. So how are you going to call it your house? And this never whatever. But I heard that the same thing was true with the foster mom, but I heard the foster mom used to pay the mortgage Well, she claimed she paid a mortgage. But the Kraft family in real life used to tell me that the foster, I mean, they used to tell us, you know, well, Danielle knew all, knew all about telling us that the house was in the foster dad Al's name and not the foster mom, Adrian Felder, but that was his wife, you know, but, but, um, but I thought that the foster grandma, Mildred Collins owned that house or that house was in her name. So I don't know, but the foster mom was so gung-ho about that being her house you know about her herself being in the being the owner of that house but then again like danielle from the craft family said that um al left Joni that house and even my twin sister mentioned about the property taxes and the house being in Joni's name So, Joni, like the foster mom, so evil if Joni was forbidden and not allowed to be in that house, in, in, the, in the house, was, you know, jo in Joni's name. You know, I mean, after we grew up, you know, if Joni tried to come and visit, and my twin sister one time in 2012, 13, 14, was telling me about how the foster mom that Joni trying to come over and visit and the foster mom had an attitude and ignored her and treated her like her presence wasn't welcome. And, and, if, and if property tax bills were going to Joni's house. It's all messed up. When my twin sister, when we were younger, she used to tell me that the foster sister Shelly used to um, illegally put, excuse me, claim us on income taxes and and, and and I thought I overheard Shelly herself um, putting that in conversation before. And in 2006, I saw and heard that Shelly was illegally claiming me on her um, on her income taxes. But it went over my head. I didn't even realize I, I should have reported that for fraud. Oh, I should have reported that. You know. But in, it's very common in New Orleans that low-class, ignorant, ghetto people illegally claim, you know, people who they don't like on their income taxes and never get caught. And the foster, the foster sister Shelly never liked me. If you never liked me, why are you claiming me on your income tax? You know... But the foster sister Shelly, the foster family, they don't claim to be Creole. They claim themselves to be black. But the foster sister Shelly, look everything, she look everything Asian just about. But certain other people will say she look everything white. But then, um, she do everything like, you know, she doesn't even act like the civilized black people. She she wanted to try to she fraudulently and illegally rich living a high life without having to work. 
but but she um you know she wants to do everything like and even talk like how the ignorant black people live i mean how, how they act not how the um the civilized black people live you know but yeah anyway um so in the dream afterwards um after that white lady kicked me out of her house um I was very close to getting wrongfully arrested and going to jail that lady in the dream she tried to set me up and in the dream um I walked somewhere in the neighborhood all throughout the neighborhood that I grew up in and then I found myself in Terrytown. I think they did used to have Tasty Donuts. But they changed the name to um, Terrytown Cafe or something like that. And in the dream, I just went to some donut shop. And I stood in a line. And right before the cashier to get to, get to me at the donut shop, I woke up. In real life, I woke up. And it was four o'clock, and I had to use the bathroom. And then I came on here to tell about this dream. And my storage space on my phone is probably trying to run out since I I forgot to um delete the other video before I got on here. So since that happened, you know I can't stay on here for longer. I gotta go and um delete the other video. But I'm gonna get off here, and I hope I didn't waste my time talking. <laughs>